DNA identification can be used for many things, including identifying suspects and victims, freeing those who are wrongly convicted, establishing paternal relationships, detecting bacteria and other organisms, and authenticating consumables. Some examples of bodily materials that can be discovered at crime scenes are blood, saliva, perspiration, semen, teeth, mucus, fingernails, and hair. These DNA holders are often found on things like cigarettes, clothes, stamps, bite marks, weapons, cups, and tissues. Law enforcement officers must make sure they take many precautions to avoid contaminating the DNA. Some of these precautions include wearing gloves, storing the DNA carefully, and using paper bags to carry the evidence. Once DNA is discovered and taken off the scene of the crime, it is often taken to a lab and put into the Combined DNA Index System, a national DNA database funded by the FBI. Let's take a specific case for example. Imagine a crime scene where someone has just been murdered. Investigators find a very small drop of blood on the floor, but no body. There are two suspects and one has been arrested for the crime, but the case is not over yet. Let's follow the steps as the investigators and scientists search for the murderer. After taking these pieces of evidence to a lab, the scientists will run a certain amount of tests on them in order to view the DNA. The first thing they want to do is identify whose blood they found on the floor. There isn't very much blood at the scene to use to identify the suspect, so PCR is used to examine the small amount of DNA. PCR, also known as polymerase chain reaction, is a copying process that allows scientists to multiply the amount of DNA they have access to. Like what we have learned in this unit, the DNA helix is unwound and split apart. Then, primers attach to each single strand of DNA, and DNA polymerase begins to copy each strand of DNA. This process is repeated over and over again until there is enough DNA to be read by scientists. PCR took one small drop of blood with very little DNA and turned it into a lot of readable DNA, the equivalent of the amount of DNA in a much larger sample of blood. This now allows the scientists to determine whose blood they have found. Now that the DNA in the blood sample is readable, we can compare it to our suspects through a process called short tandem repeat, or STR. Let's take a single strand of DNA, for example. On this strand, there are many different genes, but these genes are often similar among most people. However, if we look at the spaces between the genes, where STR occurs, we can distinguish individuals from one another. Let's take a look at our suspects again. By looking at the short tandem repeats on each person's DNA, we can establish that each person has varying DNA that identifies them as an individual. But what about the blood sample? By taking a closer look, we can figure out whose DNA the blood sample resembles. Each of the 13 loci on the strand have a certain amount of STR differing them between people. The chance of two people having the same result are one in a billion. By examining the evidence here, scientists studying this case can now conclude that Anage is the one who committed the crime because her DNA matches the DNA on the blood sample found at the scene of the crime.